Alright, hello everyone. Let's make a simple fantasy portal scene today. Now I said this was simple, but for whatever reason it was just one of those weeks where the engine really didn't want to work with me. I had a pretty clear mental picture this week of what I wanted to render, so it was just a matter of pulling it out of the invisible. Today we'll be messing around with HDRI portal effects and some basic scene design. So cue day one. Like with most projects, we'll be using the third-person template with ray tracing enabled. Once the project is loaded up, to get started, we're going to set up our camera angle and camera settings, along with getting our lighting to a place where we like it. For a quick lighting setup, I'm making use of the pack Dynamic Volumetric Sky, which gives you a lot of control and easy access to different weather effects. By having our camera and lighting set up early, I'm able to focus more on the composition of the shot. Here I start placing down some sample geometry and a mannequin of the armor we're going to be using, just for some scale reference. I'll link that armor in the description. So now I gathered a couple nanite assets from the Megascans library to start putting together our scene. I'm only making use of a couple different mega scans for ground cover. By rescaling and rotating, thanks to Nanite, we're able to quickly fill a scene with just a few assets. I have the assets at larger scales the further they are from the camera. This helps to hide the horizon line. The layers of assets also help make the thick volumetric fog a lot more noticeable. Now with the ground cover complete, we can move on to the logical next step, which is filling the place with swords. So that pretty much does it for our main scene, spare some foliage. I spent the rest of the first day making another level which I ended up not using. Here's some sweet shots of that. This was going to be the other side of the portal, but because of how I'm doing it with the HDRIs, the perspective got all screwed up. If you guys know a better way of making portals, definitely let me know down in the comments. But speaking of portals, here's how I did those. So seven unsuccessful HDRI captures of the first level later. I decided to just scrap that scene in favor of a more simple cloud scene. Shut the place down! So while that is downloading, we can set up a new scene, which will be the other side of this portal. Because our first plan kind of didn't work. All right, here's how to make that portal effect. With the skybox in place and tuned to our liking, I can then go up here and add a scene capture cube. With that in place, under its properties, I'm able to create a new render target and pair the scene capture cube to said render target. By opening it up, you can adjust the scale for a better quality image, but be wary, this really slows down the engine. Now I right-click the render target and hit Create Static Texture. This is going to be the basis of our portal material. I take our new static texture and plug it into the emissive value. And of course, that's an instant error. This means we're doing it right. Switch the shading model over to unlit, and then we can carry on. Throw in a scalar parameter set to zero. And then a reflection vector. And once these are all connected together, you should see this working. Dang, this might be a lot easier than I thought, because that's literally it. Hold on. Portals might be really easy to do. Hello? Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, it's kind of neat looking. All right, with the material all finished, I applied it to the door, for a finishing touch, add a window asset to work as a portal frame. 
And that's all there is to it. Here's the portal. So I guess the eighth time's the charm? But hey, now we're getting somewhere. It's not what I originally had planned, but the sky portal effect is a satisfying new direction. All that's left now is to apply some animations to our camera and the knight himself. But before we get into that, at this point in the process, I'd had a ton of things go wrong with this render. To spare you guys all the time I wasted, I've cut most of it out and instead compiled all of my failures into a quick digestible montage. Please enjoy. given up yet. Okay, this time, this time I'm just gonna scale it up. Hmm. Something, something's wrong here. Anyways. So, this is new. Ah! Oh god! What? Why? So, in my super professional opinion, something went wrong. Is that better? Nope. It's super not better. Um... Or maybe this just doesn't work, huh? I think I broke it. There it is. Wouldn't be a project without one of these. <clears throat> you know, you think the process is gonna be one of these. But it turns out to be more of a... We're in the final stretch now. Day three. So I considered animating the walk animation myself, but at this point I was pretty hell-bent on getting the shot finished, so I fell back on Mixamo animations. I ended up choosing this walk with briefcase animation. And I slowed it down largely to fill time, but the almost slow motion walk makes the final shot feel a lot more grand. I've gone over this in previous videos, but it's a good tip I wish I'd known earlier. To attach things to characters, you can open up their skeletons, right-click the desired bone, and hit Add Socket. In this case, it's the right-hand socket. As long as it's a movable blueprint, you can then attach things to the socket like so. It's super useful. After applying materials to the knight, there's just one more piece of the puzzle here, and that's the camera movement and camera shake. First of all, I keyframe transform in the sequencer the location of our camera using linear interpolation so that the camera moves at a constant speed. I have it slide to the right, and then just begin to rotate around, just to show off that the portal is more than just a flat image. And now for that camera shake. I created a new blueprint down here, and searched for camera shake base. I opened that up, compiled and saved it, and then I go ahead and close it, and open it up again. I don't know why, there's probably a better way to get into this menu. But anyways, once you're in here, these are the camera shake controls. Under that first menu, select Perlin Noise. I haven't messed around with the other presets, but this one looks pretty good for the most part. Don't be like me and forget to adjust the timing to zero. This will make it so that the camera shake lasts indefinitely. And beyond that, I don't really have an eye for what's good or bad camera shake other than what feels correct. I mainly stick to adjusting the roll settings, but other times I'll play around with the other values. You do want to keep these numbers pretty low. I forgot how sensitive the camera shake base was, and uh, let's see how that looks. That's way too much. Oh my god, it's too much. The cameraman is drunk. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we um. We learned something about the camera shake blueprint. Okay, so once I'd sobered up the camera guy, we had a finished shot. I ran it through the movie render queue and compiled the frames in Blender. Here it is. It's a lot of work for five seconds, but I think it's a solid five seconds. For whatever reason, this project took a lot of turns I wasn't expecting, but dang it, we got there. I hope this inspired you guys to go out and try some shots of your own. 
And that's that. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and maybe subscribe while you're at it for more making stuff here on the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.